work of campus. Who can work of campus? You may work of campus without a work permit if you have a valid study permit, are a full-time student at a designated learning institution, have started studying, are in a program that leads to a degree, diploma, or certificate, and is at least six months long, and have a social insurance number. If you are no longer a full-time student, you may still work off campus if you have been a full-time student since you started your program in Canada and are now studying part-time only because this is your last semester and you don't need a full course load to complete your program. If your situation changes and you no longer meet all the requirements, you must stop working off campus. You and your employer must make sure you are eligible to work off campus without a work permit before you start working. If you start working off campus but you don't meet the requirements, you may be asked to leave Canada. This is very important. You cannot start working without your work permit. If you do that, then you are found to be in violation of the immigration law in Canada and you will be asked to leave Canada. Who can work off campus? Even if you are a full-time student at a designated learning institution, DLI, you may not be allowed to work off campus without a work permit. This is the case if you are studying English or French as a second language, taking general interest courses or courses to prepare for another study program, or a visiting or exchange student who won't get a degree from your host school in Canada. If one of these applied to you, you need to get a valid work permit to work in Canada. Social insurance number, SIN. As we talked before, you need a SIN to work in Canada to or get benefits and services from government programs. You can apply for a SIN number with Service Canada. To apply for a SIN to work off campus, you must have one of these conditions printed on your study permit. May work 20 hours per week of campus or full time during regular breaks if meeting criteria outlined in Section 186B of IRPR, the Immigration Regulation Process. Okay? You may accept employment on or off campus if meeting eligibility criteria as per Regulation 186 F P and W, and you must cease working if no longer meeting this criteria. If you meet the above criteria and these conditions are enlisted on your study permit, you must request a change to a study permit before you can apply for a SIM. There is no fee for this request. You must apply to change the conditions of your study permit and pay a fee if your study permit has this permit does not permit the holder to engage in off-campus employment in Canada printed on it and you have changed your program of study. Very important. If you have this message, this permit does not permit that the holder to engage in off-campus employment in Canada printed in the study permit, then you need to understand that you will need to apply to change the conditions. Very important. That's why most of the students get confused and make some mistakes. So it's important to understand the difference as far as you meet the criteria or you don't meet the criteria or you change the conditions. In order for you to continue in status in Canada, you need to go through the process of applying for change of conditions if you need to. How many hours can you work? If you qualify to work off campus, you can work up to 20 hours per week. Up to 20, that is the emphasis, okay? During regular school sessions or while you are studying, if you are enrolled in an intensive program that doesn't have a schedule breaks. If you are studying part-time because you are completing the last section of your program. If you are a graduate student who has completed the required courses for your degree. And you can work full-time 
during a scheduled breaks such as the winter and summer holidays or spring break and after you finish your studies if you have applied for any other work permit and why is said after you finish your study if you have applied because if you finish in your study but you already have applied for another any other work permit you still are in the status in Canada and you can continue to work okay CIC have an online tool for students to help them determine if they can work off campus let's take a look at it and, and other information so I was mentioned before we are in the website of the government of Canada and the tool for international students that is uh, the one to help you find out if you can work off campus and basically what you do here is you're going to answer the questions like every, most of the tools in the website so the question is do you have a valid study permit so we're going to say that yes we have a valid study permit okay are you studying full time again you need to answer these questions truthfully and honestly so you can get the right information and then when I do that he asked me if I have the one of the of these conditions printed on my study permit. So again, may work 20 hours per week of campus or full time during regular breaks. May I set employment of campus if made in the regulation 186? Okay. So let's say that I don't have the those information. Okay. And then he tell me the answer. Based on your answers, you need a work permit to work off campus. You can only work off campus if you meet the criteria. Otherwise, you need it to get a valid work permit. The website just gives me the link to apply for a work permit. Okay, so let, what happens if I change the, the information? I have a study permit. I'm studying for time. But instead of saying no here, I will say yes. I have the condition printed in my study permit. Then what happens is it's going to give me another question. Are you enrolled in the academic, vocational, or professional training program that is six months or longer that leads to a degree, diploma, or certificate in Canada? So if I say yes, then you can see how all the answers I said. Based on your answer, you may work off campus without a work permit as long as you have started studying, do not work more than 20 hours a week during academic sections, and it is important to know what the academic section is in the university or college. You need to understand what the academic section in terms of weeks, time of the year, they're referring to. Because if you were beyond what the academic section is considered, you're still a violation of the requirement, okay? He said also that you are a full-time student at your school or you are a part-time student in your last semester. You have to stay enrolled in the academic, vocational, or professional training program that is six months of longer and that leads to one degree diploma or certificate and of course it's telling me that I have to have a social insurance number again that is because I say yes if I say no what would happen based on your answer you need a work permit to work off campus again so the tool is really help you to determine all the conditions so you know when you need a work permit or not and if you can work without work permit as a student, then it tells you about the requirements that you need to meet in order to be in compliance. Okay. So another tool also that I, I want you to check is the part that mentioned the designated learning institution list. Uh, we saw that in, in the explanation. And this is the page and the link is included in the lecture. Uh, what we see here is it talk about the designated immigration. It, it said that if the school you are studying at losses because they can lose the designation the status it tell you what you can do okay so let's read this very clearly if the school you are studying at loses its designated learning institution status after you get your study permit you can keep studying in your program until your current permit expires but only renew your study permit if you enroll at the designated learning institution okay so it's important to understand the note they also have information about post-graduation work permit and it tells you very clearly in bold letters not all designated learning institutions make you eligible for a post-graduate work permit program 
So he tell you here, you need to meet the criteria also. And then you see the list below of the institutions that are recognized and in which you can work, you can get a, a postgraduate work permit. So one of the criteria you need to use if you're planning to stay longer beyond just study a permit, I want to pursue probably the opportunity to work in Canada and become a permanent resident in the future. You need to make sure that the institution that you choose is in this list. Because if it's not in this list, you won't be able to get a postgraduate work permit. All right? So list of designated learning institution by province and territory. So we have three steps that we need to follow in order to determine the, the right uh, institution. So step one, tell me about that I need to choose the province or territory where the school is. I need to type the keywords such as the name of the school. And step three, I need to find the designated learning institution number and write it under the section details of the intended study in Canada on your study permit application. So, because when you find the institution, you're going to start with the province or territory, you're going to look for the name of the institution, and when you find the institution, you're going to have a number. That is the, the designated learning institution number, and with that number, you're going to write it down in your application, okay? So, let's say I want to go to Ontario. Then automatically, you filter all the institutions in Ontario. What I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have the name of the institution. I'm gonna have the the senior learning institution number, the DLI number. This is the one that you're looking for to write down for the application. It tell me the city where it's located and the campuses that they are. And of course, just to make it even easier, it tell me if offers a postgraduate eligible program work, for work permit, okay? So these institutions right now say no, 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 no. So again, all these schools right now that are, are in Ontario, the first five or six do not qualify for a postgraduate work permit. So if I, been, if I were an international student, I would be taking into consideration that information in order to choose or not, okay? You can continue, they have several pages, first, two, three, four, five, so there's a lot of institutions in Ontario, of course, one of the biggest provinces, the most popular in Canada, you will find a lot of schools. And finally, after you check this uh, website, we have a sample of how many hours you can work off campus. And here, we have a sample from the Concordia University again, Tell me about the points, uh, information that I need to read about the requirements, again, just to make it clear. Tell me about the academic year, what is academic year in terms of the university, so you understand uh, how long they are. You don't get confused, you need to get this information as an international student. As soon as you arrive to Canada, get all the information you can get from the university, so you always clear. And here you will have an interesting information in the second page. But it tells me all the situations. For example, if I'm a student type, term, registration and status, and work off campus. This is a good guide that will help me find out, basically, if I can work off campus or not. As independent exchange of visiting student, any term, register full-time or part-time, I not qualify. A student cannot work. Okay? As an undergraduate or graduate diploma certificate in fall and winter time, register full time, register part time, no register. It tells here that the student cannot work. A student full time can work up to 20 hours, and part time you cannot work. Okay, so again, it's put it in, set it up very clear. So if you have any 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 question? It's really you can just follow the the conditions here, the terms the registration status and we tell you if you can work or you cannot work. Very good tool in the pamphlet for the Concordia University and we'll be include this in the resources page of the lecture. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.